Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at permutations, which is a type of counting. Before we get started, I do suggest that you have a calculator handy so that you can go over the computations with me. So what is a permutation? It's an arrangement of n distinct objects in a specific order. That's called the, the permutation of the objects. So we say order matters. And before I get to the formula, I do like to look at examples because I find personally for me when I'm dealing with a permutation, I don't actually like using the formula. I like kind of just applying the counting principle to it instead. Um, so I'll show you some examples, then we'll get to the formula, then we can look at examples of applying the formula and you can decide if you prefer the formula or just to kind of like spell it out and, and fill in the blanks. So permutation is an arrangement of n distinct objects. And when we think of this, we think of order mattering. Order matters when something like there's a president and a vice president that are chosen by let's say popular vote or when when things the way that things are chosen will change the possible outcomes so something like um drawing two names and they each win fifty dollars order doesn't matter there and that's not a permutation but if I pull out two names and the first name I pull out gets $100 and the second one gets $50, we would say order matters because you'd probably rather get the $100 than the $50. So that would be a permutation. All right, our first example, I call it the pointless picture because I found this beauty in one of my old photo albums because at some point in life, I thought it was really cool to take pictures of my troll dolls in front of calendars of cats. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, after this photo shoot, shoot i needed to clean up the 13 troll dolls so i counted them there's 13 if you don't believe me there's there's one right up there it's a little baby one i need to clean them up and put them back in my toy chest but i decided to keep two out on display one i put on my desk and the other i wanted to keep on my nightstand so how many ways could i have chosen the dolls to keep out so see order matters because one is going on the desk so we're going to say desk and the other is going on my nightstand we'll say nightstand so order matters because they're not going to the same place. Now, I choose one to go on my desk. How many do I have to choose from? I have 13 options. Now one has been chosen. And so now for the nightstand, I'm down to 12 options. So we would say 13 times 12 is 156. So there were 156 ways to choose two troll dolls to keep out. 156 ways to choose two troll dolls of the 13 of the 13 um, to display, we'll say. Okay, so it is, it's just applying the counting principle. So I had 13 options and I had 12 options. We would use the counting principle and multiply those together. That's how many ways I could have chosen to keep one on my nightstand and one on my desk. Okay, another permutation problem. A radio DJ has a choice of seven songs in the queue. And based on this question, you might realize that I have no idea how being a radio DJ works. Okay, <laughs> he must select three different songs to play in a certain order before the commercial break. How many ways can he select the three songs in the order in which they are played? So for this one, we have three slots. We have the one that's gonna play first, second, third, and then there's gonna be the ads. So in this case, I would say order matters because you have to like, you know, well, I, again, I don't know because I've never been a radio DJ, but I assume you would have to like pull the song out and put it in a queue and it would line up first, second, third. So he has seven songs to choose from and we have first, second, and third. So for the first song, he has seven to choose from because that's what it says. There's seven songs. After one song is chosen, we assume he's not going to play the same song twice in a row. So now he would have six songs to choose from. And then again, he's not going to play the same song twice in a row or one song and then another song and then back to the first song. So then there would be five to choose from. This is a counting principle. So it would be seven times six times five. That would be uh, three, 30, 210, 210. So there would be 210 ways that he could organize these songs, ways to choose the order of three songs of these seven songs. And if you're looking at these, you might start to see a pattern here. So the last one, we had 13 troll dolls and we did 13 times 12. Here we're doing seven times six times five. This might start to look like pieces of factorials and that's exactly what permutations are. They are pieces of factorials. Okay, one more example before we get to the formula. In the game of vampire or mafia, I'm sure there's other names too. 
Each player selects a role of either vampire, seer, or the villagers. There is one vampire, one seer, and the rest of the people are villagers. How many ways, if there's nine people playing, could two people, well, could people be selected for the special roles? And the special roles means that you're a vampire or the seer. So in this case, there's two special roles. One person gets to be vampire, one person gets to be seer. And so one of the nine people is gonna be the vampire. One of those people is chosen. Now there's only eight other people who could possibly be the seer. So we would say nine times eight, and we would have 72. So there'd be 72 different combinations of two people having these special roles in a game of nine players. Okay, on to the formula. So possible permutation arrangements. There is a formula we can use, and remember we use permutations when order matters. We're gonna let n be the number of distinct things and r be the desired amount. Then, no, I don't have it, okay. Then it would be, we would say n permuted r ways. So this is the notation. P, this is a regular sized P, regular sized, and the n and the r are subscripts. So n is a subscript, meaning it's small and lower. Subscript, I don't know why I'm spelling it weird. Subscript, okay. And so the formula is we say there's n factorial divided by n minus r factorial ways or arrangements or however we wanna say it. Ways, arrangements, whatever the case may be. So if we think back to the troll dolls, I had 13 troll dolls and I had two special spots. So that would be 13 minus two special spots because R is the desired amount. So this would be 13 factorial divided by 11 factorial. That would be 13 times 12 times 11 factorial over 11 factorial. And there we get 13 times 12. So you can see the formula does kind of make sense, right? Hopefully it does. If you need a review on factorials, there is a previous video where I go over simplifying factorials what a factorial is, if you don't know, if you just think I'm really excited about the number 13, you might want to watch the video on factorials. But this is the formula. Well, now it's all gross because I wrote all over it. But this is what we would say right there. Now let's look at examples of simplifying permutations. And then you can decide if you like the formula better or if you like the way that I just kind of like lay it out and use the counting principle. Okay, so here you have no choice but to use the formula because it's not an application. So 8 permuted 4 ways, we would say that's 8 factorial divided by eight minus four factorial. We wanna compute what's inside the parentheses. That'd be eight factorial over eight minus four is four factorial. So this would be eight times seven times six times five times four factorial divided by four factorial. Those cancel. Eight times seven times six times five. That would be 30 times 56 and 30 times 56 is 1,680. Oh, our package deal. Okay, so next we have 15 permuted three ways. That would be 15 factorial divided by 15 minus three factorial. That's 15 factorial over 12 factorial. Simplifying the 15 factorial, let's get it down so that it has its own factor of 12 factorial. That way we can just cancel those. And 15 times 14 times 13 would give us a total of 2,000. 730. Last one, oh boy, we have 47 factorial over 47 minus 5 factorial. That would give us 47 factorial over 42 factorial. Yikes. You can see these can get really, really big. That's 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 factorial. Whew. Okay. So then we would have uh, 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 times 42, nope, just times 43. Oh my goodness, it's a huge number. 1, 8, 4, 0, 7, 2, 6, 8, 0. Okay, let's put our periods in. 184,072,680. Woo! That is a big number. Good thing we used a calculator. So you notice with permutations, you always want this R value to be somewhat small because could you imagine if it was 42 permuted 40, 47 permuted 42 ways? 
you'd have to do 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 dot 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 times 6. Ooh, that would be a mess. Okay, so again, what I would do is look at each application, pause the video, try it for yourself, and see if you can come up with the correct number of permutations. For the new fall season, a network president show has 11 shows in development and six openings for the primetime schedule. And how many ways can the president arrange these new shows to fit into the schedule? So obviously some are getting cut, right? Because there's only six openings. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to pause you, try it, see what you come up with. Okay, how'd you do? So if you use the formula, we have 11 to choose from, and we want to permute them in six ways, right? Because order matters here because you can only have one show at six o'clock and one show at 6.30 and one show at seven, so on and so forth. So we would say 11 permute six. This is the same thing, right? As if we have, we have six openings, three, four, five, six, and then we have 11 to choose from at first and then 10 and then nine, eight, seven, and six. Six, yeah, because this would be 11 factorial over 11 minus 6 factorial, which would be 11 factorial over 5 factorial. So if you use the formula, you would end up with this exact same thing either way. So if we do that, either way, we end up with a lot of different options. Let's see, 332,640. So a lot of different ways that this network president would have to make a decision because Ooh, first of all, you have to break the bad news to five of them, which is no good. Um, but then you still have 332,000 options for how you can arrange these shows. Okay, now, how would the situation change if of the 11 shows, seven were comedies and four were dramas? Hopefully that adds up to 11, it does. And the president decides that a comedy should air in the first primetime slot. So the two different ways we can look at this, you can set up the, the formula for the first we would say, okay, they definitely want a comedy for that first slot, so that would be seven permute one times now, and then if there's no other restrictions, now there's only 10, choose to, 10 shows to choose from because there were 11, but now one is gonna air first. So we would have 10 to choose from, and we only have five slots remaining because there were a total of six, but one is taken up by this first one, and then there are um, five remaining slots. So seven permute one, that would be seven factorial over seven minus one factorial. That would be seven factorial over six factorial, which is just seven, right? Because this is gonna be seven times six factorial over six factorial. Then here, 10 permute five would be 10 factorial over 10 minus five factorial. There's gonna be a nice symmetry there. This would be 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five factorial over five factorial. And so we would have seven times 10 times nine times eight times seven times six, which would give us, this should be smaller than the last one, right? Five times seven, I get 211,680. So it does reduce, reduce it, but not by much. Now, this was using two, we had to use the permutations twice because we had two different situations. One was just focusing on that first slot, and then the second one was looking at the remaining five spots. If we were to do it out the way I like to with my dashes, I would have my six slots, and I would say, okay, this one must be a comedy, of which there are seven to choose from. And then for these, it could be any of the remaining 10. So then it would be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So you can see either way, whether you use the formula or whether you kind of just like map it out, you end up with the same answer. In our last example, a company is issuing IDs to its employees. The ID numbers will be assigned in a way that there will be four letters followed by two digits where there's no repetition in the letters or the digits. How many unique IDs will exist? So again, you can map it out the way I like to. It's a six digit ID, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. These four are letters that there's no repetition, meaning like if this is an A, this can't also be an A. And then these are digits, and again, no repetition. So if the first one's a one, the second one is not a one. Okay, so if we do it this way, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so it'd be 26, could be any one of the 26 for the first, then there's 25 left to choose from, then 24 and then 23. For the digits, there are 10 to be, that could possibly be the first digit, 
and then there are only nine that could be the second digit. So when we look at this, um, what we would say is 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 90. And we would end up, oh my goodness, this is, could be a huge company. Maybe this is Amazon. 3229,000. So we have 32,292,000 different combinations. If you want to use the formulas, we would start out the, with the letters. We would separate the letters from the digits. It'd be 26 per mute 4 times, because this is still a counting principle question, times the possible arrangements of the digits, which would be 10 per mute 2. And if you work these two things out, you'll end up with exactly what we see up there. This has been a lesson on permutations. Thank you for stopping by.